Good Wednesday morning to you folks. Um, hopefully you had a good night's rest and hopefully you've been doing well. I appreciate those who who watch this and who comment on it. I don't do it for uh, publicity. I don't do it uh, to get my name out there. Um, but some of you have said it's an encouragement to you and I thank God for that. I know myself I need uh, to be encouraged and I know at this time that um, others do as well so uh, hopefully this will be something good for you to hear today in the book of Romans I'm going to read a piece of scripture to you in the book of Romans from chapter 3 and this is a very uh, familiar scripture to those who read much or listen to much preaching or have been to church much uh, in their lifetime um, but chapter 3 of Romans and verse 23 familiar words for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus for all have sinned uh, just as uh, what's happening uh, in our world is universal right now. How it is, uh, there's no uh, country probably that it has not reached. I know for a while here in Ohio, up until a week, a week and a half ago, possibly, there was one out of 88 counties that reported no COVID-19 um, infections but in cases, but that's not the case now. I don't know how long it was the case um, before um, they found that out, but um, I know it's not the case now. I know uh, that there are some even in that county. And so it's statewide. We know it's nationwide. We know it's worldwide. Well, that's the same with sin. There's not a, a, a country that it has not permeated there's not a kingdom that it has not touched. There's not a family that it has not either touched nor almost destroyed. Sin is an enemy. Satan, as I said the other day, desires to sift us as wheat, uh, is walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so sin is devastating. Uh, it is, uh, I spoke of uh, leprosy yesterday morning if you had cancer and you went to the doctor and the doctor said now we can get a hundred percent of that uh, but you got to tell us how much of it you want gone well most people would say I want every bit of it gone I want the whole hundred percent gone well if that's the case uh, then why is it that if we're not careful we can get content after conversion of maybe dabbling in things that we don't need to be dabbling in. And so we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the scripture says that. But then it says we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And therefore, in verse 28, it says, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So he's justified by faith. It is not of works, lest any man should boast, uh, the scripture says. It, nowhere is it that we can work uh, and all of a sudden now we can claim that we are what we are by our own goodness. I read to you here a while back, the Apostle Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And it is by his grace. So, so we've all sinned, and we've all come short. Here's the sad thing. Some decide to stay there. Some decide to uh, continue to dwell in that when you don't have to. The forgiveness comes from God through the plan of salvation. Forgiveness is there. The choice is yours to make. The opportunity lays before you and before me and before anyone else that, that is watching this today or could ever watch it in the future. 
The opportunity is yours to make. The choice is yours to make. He already made his choice. I know that goes against some teaching, uh, some doctrine that people would teach, but he's already made his choice. Whosoever will, let him come unto me. He is not willing that any should perish. He's made his choice. He gave his life on the cross, and it is, it is now up to us. So what do we must first do? I preach it to the choir here because usually people that aren't Christians aren't going to stay on here very long and watch this, even if they know me. But just in case, what is it that we do? Well, first we must admit that we are sinners. And that's hard for people to do. I was speaking with a family the other day and we were talking about depression, discouragement, grief. It's just hard for people to admit sometimes that, that they find themselves there. And being honest, it just means we're human. We have all those emotions. They come. And when you feel as if you should be stronger, then you don't like to admit uh, discouragement, depression, uh, weakness. But it's there at times. And just as much as you don't like to admit that, some of us didn't like to admit that we were sinners. But we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Christ gave his life so we could be reunited one day with those loved ones that pass. And be reunited with God who, who, who from the beginning made this world, spoke it into existence, put man in that garden knowing that he wouldn't even get a generation away from Adam and Eve being in the garden before sin would enter. So what did he do about it? From the foundation of the world, he preordained that he would send his son to give his life for us. God loves you today, folks. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all need a Savior. Thank God we got a Savior, right? He left the splendor of heaven for me And he took on the likeness of man He came to live in an ungodly world Though spotless the lamb knew no sin All heaven's foundations were shaken that day But for changing his mind he could not Though he knew exactly what he would go through Oh, he must have loved me a lot And how many tears have I brought to his eyes I've heard him more often than not Still infinite mercy responds to my cry Oh, he must have loved me a lot He went through a sham of a trial alone Through the darkness of death and the grave He went through the pain of denial and scorn The outcast and beggar to save If I had the power to turn back the time Make amends for the things I forgot a lifetime of goodness could never atone Oh, he must have loved me a lot And how many tears have I brought to his eyes I've heard him more often than not Still infinite mercy responds to my cry Oh, he must have loved me a lot Yes, he must have loved me a lot. Loved me a lot. There's no doubt about it. He loved you a lot. He loves us a lot. When you have children or grandchildren 
and uh, you look at them and it just seems your heart just swells with love, then you could only imagine the love that God must have had for us, um, that he sent his only begotten son to save us. He wouldn't have needed to have done that if we weren't all sinners, but we were, and so he did. Lord, I thank you for the day you've given us. And God, I pray that you would bless all those that watch this. God, that you would give comfort to them, peace to them. Help us to understand today, Lord, and to be thankful for everything that we possess. Everything that we have good comes from the Father of lights. The scripture says all good things come from God. And Lord, we thank you for the life you've given us. God, we thank you for our families, Lord, we thank you for the peace that you've given us. And even in this time of trouble and turmoil, God, uh, we're thankful that we can still trust you and know that you see everything, you know everything, and you are in control. We love you, Lord, and we do thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks. See you tomorrow.